shops that sold uh, whole cuts of cooked meat, you see, would not allow uh, my friend, Mr. Boulanger, uh, to sell just soup as a whole meal. But he said he could because soup was very different from the meat cuts and all. So he opened a joint called, uh, he said, I will give you a restor restorative and it will restore your soul. And that is the name restaurant, restorative in French. So today we're going to make some restoratives in honor of Mr. Boulanger. Remember, 1765, that was a while back, and the first restaurant. Now, uh, first thing I want to do is... make a, a chowder and it's a, con oh, a concoction of two different coasts. It's not Boston, it's not Manhattan, it's not Seattle. Uh, it's a uh I see the problem here. All right, there we go. My style, and it's very, very rich. So we'll get started right away with the... Oh, incidentally, something else you must have. If you're going to make good soups, you want to have a, um, uh, a heat diffuser. This, this metal uh, piece is a very interesting uh, bit of uh, construction because it will even out all of the heat in your burner. You can use them either on electricity or on gas. They'll work great, and it'll make everything even so that you won't burn thick soups. And this one is going to be thick. I will begin with... Um, Let's see, turn up the heat here. Begin with a quart of, of uh, good chicken stock, and uh, that will begin boiling right away, and so we'll add the following delicious things. I have sautéed, if I can find the right one here. Pumpkin soup, here we go. I've got all kinds of soups. I've sautéed uh, six stalks of celery and a couple of yellow onions in a bit of butter. Why do you sauté if you're going to boil all of this stuff? Well, because you want to, you want to even it out and, uh, and uh, soften the flavors, blend them first before you put it into, into the soup. So I'll put my six stalks of sautéed celery and two sautéed onions along in a, in a little butter, you see. Put that into my one quart of chicken stock and bring that to a simmer. Now I must add, remember this is a clam chowder we're making. You're wondering what's going to go in next, but it's a, it's a delicious thing. We're going to add um, a little bit of salt and pepper and some thyme. Where do I have some salt today? Here we go. A little bit of salt. Be careful, not too much. Lots of pepper. There we go. And for my seasoning. And the reason you saute it in butter is also the salt and the richness of the flavor. My herb, I'm going to use, I think my favorite herb of all, which is a good thyme. You just want about a, oh, half a teaspoon, not much. We don't want it to taste heavy of thyme, but uh, very light. Now, to the pot, we will add some, some carrots, uh, potatoes. I don't want carrots. Carrots are in another soup. All right, we're going to add some potatoes. I have about a pound and a half here. And uh, you notice that I have not taken the peel off. I've simply cubed them. And I've stored these in, so in uh, solid water so that, uh, let's see, that should be about a pound and a half, isn't it? No, you're right. I don't really measure very well, but that's my problem, not yours. Okay. Now then, while those simmer, and that's going to take some time, you're going to simmer the potatoes along with the sautéed celery and onion. Why, why did you not simmer that? I mean, I'm sorry, but somebody asked me, when do you cook the bacon for the Snoop Dogg's bologna sandwich? Oh, I don't know. Use leftover bacon or any other fucking time. In the soup stock, along with a little bit of thyme, salt, and pepper, cook that for a time until they're very tender. Uh, not mushy, but just barely tender. All right? In the meantime, let's prepare a uh, soup 
filler. We're going to make a, a broth of milk and butter, a bechamel sauce, literally. First of all, we have to make a roux, and we have... Sorry, my cooking videos are for people who can actually think. Maybe that's my problem. In our pan, one cube of butter, and I'm going to add to that, or a stick. Is that all right? Fourth pound. I'm going to add to that about a half a cup of flour. And we'll stir that in so that it cooks just a minute. We'll make a basic roux. It's spelled R-O-U-X. In Dallas, they call it a rux, I'm afraid. I Actually, it's just R-O-O-O. -O -O. I found some fellows in New Orleans that cook, and they call it a rux, too. It's really, I think it's very funny, but uh, that's not quite enough flour. I'll put in, a, put in a bit more. Make sure I have about half and half. You see, about half a cup of flour and half a cup of, of butter. You want to cook that a bit. I'm doing this in a hurry, so I want you to cook yours a little bit longer. Don't, uh, don't, uh, do, it too, don't do it too quickly because you, you want to get rid of that pasty flavor. Yeah, but also don't do it too long because it'll be a burn pile of shit before. Before you know it. You know what I mean? All right, now stir the roux into hot milk, and you notice that I've moved the milk off the burner. I don't want the milk boiling when I pour in the roux, because otherwise you're going to get lumps. And if you're tired of lumpy gravies and all, then make a roux. Don't mix flour and water together. You'll get the globs. You'll get, you're making a paste, you see? And the little globs of flour stick to one another if you mix them in water. But if you mix them in butter first, then they fall apart. Now, I'll put that back in the burner, and we can uh, let that simmer for just a few minutes. All right. Now, to my... We're going to pretend now that the potatoes are cooking nicely. Of course, they're not even bubbling yet. I need to put in three cans of clams. Now, because I'm from Seattle, Tacoma, I want you to know that what I'm doing now is sin. In the West Coast, we would never use a canned clam, and I'm never to be doing this, but I'm going to do it in front of you anyhow. I'm putting in just the juice from three, six and a half ounce can um i'm sorry i was alive for when you shot this episode um there were fresh clams available in chicago you just had to pay for them hands of chopped clam just the juice goes into the pot because you want to cook the vegetables uh, and the stock uh, without uh, overcooking the clams you see so we'll put the clams in at the last minute. They've already been cooked. If they come in a can, you don't want to overdo them. There we go. All right. Now, back to our sauce. You see the soup is ready? The, the Again, I've never had canned clams. I've never had clams. I'm not the biggest seafood fan. But again, with a show as popular as yours, you should be able to get clams. Milk. See how thick that is? And you grew up on the West Coast. You should know how to deal with clams. Now we're going to thin that down, of course. It's not going to be th that thick when we put it in the soup. So I'm going to get you a kettle out here and let's change, change places. That's not too hot to handle. Good. All right. So we will then stir in after our, after our um, potatoes are tender. Then we're going to stir in the broth of milk, flour, and butter. And this will cook up. Oh, it's so rich. Are you still with me? Don't leave now. This is, a, this is where we get going. Now we need four ripe tomatoes. The potatoes are done. You see, you're... What? 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 First off, the potatoes look damn near raw when you put them in. And potatoes need time. And there's no way it'd be that thin. Potatoes release starch as they cook. But why in the name of God are you adding tomatoes? Again, I am not an expert on clam chowder. I'm willing to be humbled. But why in the name of God are you adding tomatoes? And then you have a nice potato soup at this point, right? So then we're going to add four uh, chopped tomatoes, nice ripe ones. Don't use those green things you get at the supermarket. If you have to, buy your tomatoes ahead of time and let them ripen on the windowsill. Yeah, that's plenty. All right. And we'll simmer that now a few more minutes along with the clams. 
Then we'll test it for seasoning. And You don't need to simmer it with the clams. The clams are already fucked. They're already drier than hell. That's why uh, deli tuna salad requires canned tuna. It's already cooked to fuck. And we have it. Where are the clams? They're right in front of me, no wonder. I have so many things going on today that I have things labeled. I've never done that for you. I have little notes all over the counter. And I think that's one of the ways that you should probably run your kitchen when you're trying to entertain. Because you don't want to, to uh, be exhausted when you're fine. No, I just know what the fuck I'm doing! Entertaining, you want to enjoy yourself. That's a basic rule for entertaining. Uh, I could have every single member of my family and every single friend of mine in my kitchen at the same time and i will know how to make tacos have things so organized and where everything the fuck is is that you can have fun instead of uh, running around like a clam with your neck chopped off okay we would let that simmer then for another 10 minutes or so after i put the clams in you see cook the potatoes in the stock first along with the vegetables then add the tomatoes and uh, the clams and cook that for about 10 minutes so that the tomatoes are still, uh, um, they're still in form. Why are you adding tomatoes to clam chowder? Plus, when you want all this shit to go down? You know what I mean? But very tender and nice. And you have a clam chowder. Well, let me show you one. I have one in the oven. Oh, Except I have God. everything in there for you. Yes. Then I have one in the oven just to keep it warm. I used to love this man as a child, and now I'm just, I, I, I'm sorry. He let America astray. And I think you'll like it very much. Find a spot to put this out. Clam chowder is, for me, a marvelous meal. You don't need anything else. All right. Oh, boy, that's hot. Isn't this a beautiful pot? This is called a Pelion from France. Ah, there. So, all right, this is already pissing me off. So you, you, you couldn't even be bothered to cook your two clam chowders in the same cooking vessel. Now, I understand for TV show, they have limitations on time. But. But. They usually stick to the same cooking vessel. You didn't even do that here. <laughs> and it weighs a ton. It's just as heavy as you thought it was. There you are. That's the finished product. Isn't that too rich for words? Now, it needs one more no, thing. No, it's not. It needs some parsley garnish. There we are. And I'm going to dish up a bit of that. And uh, I may, if, I, if it doesn't have enough flavor in it, and I put in salt and pepper too, of course, but if it doesn't have enough flavor for me, or if I want a little bit of added hotness, do you know what I'm going to put in that? I prepared some sherry. Uh, in a little, uh, put it in a little shaker. You see, can you see the peppers floating around in there? Can you see the peppers in there? I don't think you can at all. Well, I'll try this then. Let me show you what the peppers look like. They're called hatakas. And you buy these long dried peppers and uh, just put four or five in about a cup of sherry and let it sit for, oh, a week. And then you have hot peppered sherry and this wonderful stuff. So just sloosh by the drippy, you see? Not too much, that's plenty. My, I can just hear Channing yelling now because uh, that's enough hot stuff for him. He would holler, that's it, quit, quit, quit. All right, enough of the chowder here. Let me uh, begin with another one, or go on with another one. Yeah, because you start the cook in one cooking vessel, you end with another. And, I, and again, if they were both stainless steel pots, I wouldn't have had much of a problem with it. But no, one is a completely different cooking type.
All my childhood sh heroes and all your childhood heroes will turn to shit. The next one. Oh, you know what I just realized? I forgot to tell you about the bacon. Let me let me uh, let me back up and add a little bit more flavor to that pot. When you're first making your stock, uh, blanch about a quarter pound of bacon in in water. You see, I've just blanched this in a pan of hot water, and put that in the soup too. Anytime you'd like, because the bacon's cooked. Why would you blanch bacon? What the bacon's goodness comes from the salty and the crispy. Now you just have pre-cooked pork belly. You don't want to use bacon that's uh, that hasn't been blanched because it has too much of a smoky flavor, and you don't want to uh, you don't want to cover the clam flavor, not at all. Okay, are we ready? Let's go on. Am I ready? It's not you, is it? The next one that we're going to prepare is a beauty uh, because it's, uh, uh, it's made from pumpkin, so your kids are going to think it's just a riot. Have you ever made pumpkin soup? I need a big kettle here, and we'll get our stock going. I already have my stock in the pot. There we go. And we will, we will put into the pot uh, about uh, eight cups of stock, and then I'm going to use canned pumpkin because I'm cheating today. I just don't have time to find a fresh pumpkin. But if you want to f use fresh pumpkin, steam about two and a half pounds of pumpkin uh, and uh, until it's, uh, you can mush it, you see, and then just mush it up with a potato masher. Peel it first. But I'm using a 29-ounce can. This is eight cups of stock. I'm using a, a chicken stock that you've made yourself, for heaven's sakes. I'm using eight cups, one large can or 29-ounce can, and one small can or a 16-ounce can. Lord, I think it says 16, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Okay. That will make our pumpkin soup. And our seasonings are very, very simple. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, we're going to put into that some uh, interesting uh, seasonings now and a thickener. And for a thickener, we want to use a tapioca and... All right, I'm done with this. I, I am fucking done with this. God. Another hero fallen. Pesto Pomodoro. copyright and they don't really say anything so scroll them all right here's voodoo pasta welcome to the waverhood the wayfair vibe at our place of our our fun pasta so like i said i'm choosing to use bow ties uh, just simply because i We'll go ahead and get our hands washed up here and get ready to start with our voodoo pasta. So, sort of halfway joking with Kim, uh, we had purchased tickets before COVID happened to go watch Big Bad Voodoo Daddy in concert down at the Taft Center in Cincinnati. And they postponed it once. And then I got notification again today that they postponed it again. So... <clears throat> so anyways, tonight's voodoo pasta. So we're going to be making an Alfredo sauce from scratch. So we've got some of our ingredients out. So we've got our, our four tablespoons of butter. Uh, we're going to grab our, um, our Parmesan cheese and our heavy cream from the fridge whenever we get ready to make that. And that will be um, a little bit of salt and a little bit of garlic. That will be our um, parm or yeah, our, our Alfredo sauce. I said Parmesan sauce, but I'm in mean Alfredo. So that'll be our Alfredo sauce. So um, going into the pasta, uh, we have parsley flakes. We've got some Cajun seasoning. We've got nutmeg will also go into the Alfredo sauce. And then we also have our, our fun pasta. So like I said, I'm choosing to use bow ties uh, just simply because I thought it would be kind of neat, uh, sort of like New Orleans style, whatever. So I think it'd be a fun time. So, um, and then the andouille sausage obviously is still in the refrigerator. 
So the first things first though, let's go ahead and get our water on for our noodles so they can start to boil. <clears throat> So whenever you're getting the water in here, you don't want to make a full pot. You want just enough water that's going to cover the noodles, so that way the water will boil faster. Oh my god. No, you don't! You want a shit ton of water so the noodles don't stick together! Oh god, who the fuck taught you to cook? Sure. My mom found you. Awesome. I'm glad Cindy's here. <laughs> You know what? I don't even care anymore. I guess I have the life drained out of me. Good night, everybody.